Okay. This is it. The last round. The top two. The arena. Two men enter. One man leaves. Now normally, this would be Beard versus Beard. Last time I saw Leverone, he had a nice one. But being the gadfly that he is, he says, yeah, no shave November. I'm shaving every day. But no. Beard versus clean shaven. Gordo versus Ryan. Test as old as time. <clears throat> Infect versus Black Red. Alright, that, that last one's not. Now, Gordo's Infect deck, if you've been watching, is not just any old Infect deck, and I feel like I haven't been... I haven't hyped it up enough, because I'm not going to read you the whole list. To view that, you can go to MTG goldfish dot or excuse me mtg top eight dot com and uh search for his name but i'm just gonna say a few of the cards and numbers of cards in it okay you ready one icker claw mirror two vines of vastwood one piracy charm one slip through space one slaughter horn by the way this is main deck one apostle's blessing four rancor okay okay Sideboard. I'm only going to say three cards on the sideboard. Three troll ascetic. Yeah. So that's the infect deck. That's this goofy pile. Gordo has top aided quite a few of these events. And he's usually pretty close if he doesn't. His opponent, Leverone, if you haven't been paying attention, he's playing one of the new up-and-coming decks in Modern. Black, Red, Hollow One. And this deck has impressed. We've had him on camera three rounds, and his deck has looked so good. Like, actually getting to play spot removal is insane. In addition, of course, to turn one four fours. He's on the play. Let's see what he can do. On six cards is Ryan. He would love to deploy a turn one hollow one, immediately start pressuring, not give Gordon the chance to set up. Leverone in the tank. Gonna maul. Wow. Again he goes to five in game one. He's gone to five in game one two times that I've seen already. Mulliganing can't be good for this deck. Now, Ryan is a theater nerd. He directed Antony and Cleopatra, a performance of that in Providence. That was, that was three or four months ago. And uh, he's acting in one, too, right now. Dutchman and the Slave Industry Night Performance, a play that I've never heard about. Never heard of, I should say. But uh, that's what he's doing. Thanks, Facebook. 
Turn one. Cycle Street Wraith, Burning Inquiry. So, through the magic of mulliganing and burning inquiry, Ryan can have three cards in hand at the end of this little turn. This is always awkward. as they figure out the logistics of this stupid, stupid card. Much more interesting, on, or much more fun on Magic Online. So Gordo discards three spells. Ryan has to hope that all lands are left. Discarding two Infectors is nice. There aren't that many in the deck. Ryan discards land, land, looting, has no hollow ones. Ryan could have deployed anywhere between 0 and 12 power right there. And it's 0. Despite discarding two infectors, Gordo still has a third. And like I said, there aren't that many. Four Blighted, four Glistener, one Icker Claw. There's only nine, so this is fully a third of the infect creatures in Gordo's deck. Not including, of course, Ink Moth Nexus, which is the frightening one. Here's Gurmy. Big Daddy Germs, turn two. Not the worst start for Ryan. Not the best. But you know what? He has a 5 5. It's going to trade with at least two cards of Gordon's. Could be so simple as a Vines of the Vast, but a Glistener Elf. Uh, or Gordon could just ignore it. Cycles. The Dissenter's Deliverance. Now, this this is the route that Gordon has taken with this. You know, the deck used to play the Cyclers that are Gitaxian Probe. Gordon is going with the Cyclers that are Dissenter's Deliverance. Yeah, it costs one mana. Doesn't let you see their hand, but sometimes it blows people out. Like Gordo would have blown out Justin Provencal in the top four. Looting is flashed back. Bloodgast is discarded. And Leverone declines to trade with uh, Glistener Elf for a half of his Gurmag. Not what he's into right now. Two mana, Iker Klamir, Modern All Star. Iker Klamir, by the way, if y'all don't know, like everyone knows Glistener Elf. Most people know Blighted Agent. Iker Claw is a two mana 1 1. When you block it, it gets plus 2 plus 2. And of course, it has Infect, obviously.
Apollo 1, go. Ryan, despite being on five cards, despite being against the Explosive Infect deck, actually doing okay. There's no unblockable Blighted Agent. There's no Flying Ink Moth Nexus. Gordo just has some stupid little Ground Pounders. Not really a big deal. Given Ryan time to draw into Lightning Bolt, Fiery Temper, Flame Wake Phoenix that recurs. Blood Gas. He already has one Blood Gas in his graveyard. <coughs> Given enough time, Ryan will assemble all the Blood Gasts. Draw all the bolts. Of course, given enough time, Gordo will draw all his nexuses and fly over for the victory. So, ground swells, save the creature, and give infect. Glistener Elf comes out for another threat. Ryan needs some gas, and he needs it now. The Rancor is surprisingly annoying here. Giving Trample, going to make every creature into a big threat. That's all he's got. Let's see if he has a lightning bolt at least. Gotta do something here. Say his block. Vines kick. Does Brian have the bolt? Bolt. Nice. Vines. Again. Ryan scoops. Scooby doopy. Not sure you had to, though, to be honest with you. I'll tell you why in a sec. Oh, never mind. I'm just an idiot. I forget how Zendikar is. I thought Vines of the Vastwood just gave it Shroud. But it gives it Hexproof. Durr. So Leveron, for the first time today, I've seen him lose a game. <clears throat> Hasn't lost that I've seen yet, but he has now. Going to the sideboards here. Once again. The troll ascetic. The invisible stalker. Does he want these? I don't think so. Troll ascetic is good, but invisible stalker is clearly not. Kind of counterintuitive about the ascetic, but at the same time. 
It blocks Gurmag Angular infinitely. Hollow one, infinitely. It's one of the few creatures that can actually block a Bloodgast and not be embarrassed by the efficiency. And of course, Path to Exile. I mean, that one's obvious. One of the few ways in the format to favorably deal with a Gurmag Angler. The Lightning Bolt's Abrupt Decays and Fatal Pushes of Leveron's Jund opponent didn't do it. Path to Exile, though, will. Leveron, on the other hand, has Ancient Grudges, Anger of the Gods, Thought Seize, Lightning Axe. He has a lot of cards he could side in. He has 12 cards, everything but the Dragon's Claw he could side in. But will he want to? That I don't know. That's a lot of cards to side in. You dilute your main deck when you do that. Like we were talking about with Justin Provencal and Affinity. You can't side in too many cards. Right? Like at, at the end of his game versus Gordon in the semifinals, he had two Blood Moons and a Thalia in play. That is not what he wants to be doing. So I have to imagine we'll see the Ancient Grudges for sure. Just having up a stomping ground and an Ancient Grudge in the graveyard means that Gordo can't really go for the Ink Moth plan. At least it becomes hard. And they're free, right? Because if you're Ryan, you have four Burning Inquiry, four Faithless Looting, four Cathartic Reunion. You kind of want to discard cards anyway in this deck. And that's just a free discard. For Anger, i got to imagine those are coming in. Any deck that plays Noble Hierarch has a severe weakness to Anger of the Gods. That'll come in. But beyond that, right, that's six cards. It's already tough to side out six cards in any deck. Like, when you're sitting there in a match modern, match standard, match anything, and you look to your sideboard like, ooh, I like these three, and I like these two, and I like this one. Sweet. I want all these. And then you look at your main deck. You're like, oh, man. Yeah, I can side out this one silver bullet that's bad, but what else do I do? I don't know. Like, that's me looking at Ryan's deck list. I don't know what he's going to side out. He did bring in Thoughtseize. He sees a protection spell, a protection spell, a noble, and a might of old Krosa. Oh, and a path. That's not a land. Got to imagine this is going to take path to exile. The only way in the hand to stop a Gurmag Angler or Hollow One. Not like he cares about Noble when he has Anger at his deck. Spell Pierce is easily played around. Might of Old Cross up. Whatever, there's so many pump spells in the deck. He's going to draw another one. An Apostle's Blessing. Mm, yeah, that one's good. That one's good. It's got to either be Blessing or Path or maybe Noble if he doesn't have the Anger. But he's not taking Might of Old Cross and he's not taking Spell Pierce. He goes with Noble Hierarch. Reasonable. Very reasonable. Gordo draws. Not for the bounce in the leg, I'd say he's as cool as ice. And wow, he doesn't lead with Ink Moth Nexus. Mark me surprised. He wants to keep up the Spell Pierce, which I get, right? I get that. Stop Ryan from playing a Cathartic Reunion. But, like, now, what do you do, right? What do you do? Do you counter this Faithless Looting? I mean, you could. It definitely stops Hollow One. This turn. But it's inherently card disadvantageous. 
and you only have one spell pierce. Wow, he counters it. Mark me surprised. You also take three to do it, which matters. As opposed to just one fetching at the end of the turn. Gordo draws Thinks. Thinking, thinking, Nexus go. Okay. Here we go. What's Leverone have for his third turn? Flashback, Faithless Looting. This is why you don't spell pierce that. And I know it's awkward, right? Like, spell pierce is bad on turn five. But I'm not liking Gordo's chances right about now. Ryan sets up his graveyard. <clears throat> He's got the Phoenix in there now. Any future Gurmags only cost one or two. In response, Gordo gets in for five. Might have old Krosa. Ryan knew about that. And now his, he's effectively at one more attack because Vines does it, Might of Old Krosa does it. He has to live in fear at this point. What is Ryan going to do? Now, he has a lot of ways to interact with that Ink Moth Nexus. He has four Fiery Temper, four Lightning Bolt, two Ancient Grudge. You would think at this point in the game, after a Faithless Looting and a few draw steps, he'd find a way. It's not guaranteed. But even the threat of open mana means Ryan's not going to go Nexus Animate, Might of Old Krosa, Attack. That's madness. Unless, of course, he has a fourth land for that Apostle's Blessing we know about. Gordo's hand has Path, Apostle's Blessing, and that's all we know about at this point. Enough time has gone by where he has some fresh cards. Burning Inquiry. Each player draws three cards, shuffles their hand, discards three cards. I'm mesmerized by Burning Inquiry. So interesting watching people discard. Graph Diggers and Apostles Blessing discarded. Interesting. So we know that Gordo still has Path. It's Gurmag Angler, Flame Blade, and I think that was a Fiery Temper. 
Maybe a lightning axe. Hard to tell with these red burn spells. They're all just fiery. Just fiery stuff. We know that. Flame blade, go. Ryan has to at least bluff an ancient grudge. Whether or not he has it, he has to bluff it. But with only two cards in hand, if you're Gordo, it's pretty tempting. Pretty tempting to just go for it here. Activate. Might of Old Crosa. Swing. Or become immense. Or Vines of the Vastwood. Whatever it is. Ryan at five infect. Does Gordo go for it? Ryan has to do his best poker face here. Yep. Gordo does not go for it. He says, nope, my Become Immense is best saved in response to a lightning bolt. Glistener, go. And Ryan, no Ancient Grudge. End of turn Ancient Grudge, I wouldn't have been surprised about. Ryan, back against the wall here. If he can somehow get ferocious, he can at least bring back the Phoenix. It would have to involve something like flashback faithless looting. Discard two cards. Cycle Street Wraith. Discard a card. Pay a red, bring it back, but he doesn't have it. Just gonna sit on the flame blade. So Path takes out the flame blade, Ryan searches. Fortunate for him that there's no blood gas this game. No clock. One mana. Activate. Attack. Pump Glistener. This is lethal. A handshake. Wow, Ryan has nothing. Oh, man. Gordon wins. Gordon wins. The Infect player. Two O's. The Red Black Hollow One deck. Earning himself an invitation to the Titanium Finals. Well done, Gordon. Very nice. Very nice. We got we got a we got someone jacking the iPad right about now. Congratulations, Gordon. Condolences to Ryan. This is his second finals appearance, his second loss. He has a top eight. Just very unfortunate, but you know what? Someone's got to win. Someone's got to lose, and this time it was Gordo. Well done, bud. Well done. So he ends yourself the invite to the Titanium Finals. That is early next year. Check out Gordo's deck list on mtgtop8.com. Should be up there in a few days. As always, I'll ask you to Subscribe to the channel if you want to. I'll ask you to leave a comment if you want to. Talk to us about Gordon. Talk to us about how handsome Ryan Leverone looks without the beard. Talk to me about why my commentary sucks. Tell Tom to fire me. I don't care. But do something. Be more than a passive listener. Use your voice to comment. Like us on Facebook, TJ Titanium Series. We'll be doing a giveaway for the next plus. Where you might be able to win something like a masterpiece hasn't been entirely decided yet, but it will be soon. 
Thank you for watching, as always, and once again, congratulations to Gordon. I'm going to step out the booth and go shake his hand.